Bob, on the first day of the 2011 U.S. Sport Aviation Expo in sunny Sebring, Florida, which is such a pleasure after some of the uh, stories we're hearing from folks that have been traveling here from colder climes like, well, Wichita, you got to love it. Yeah, I came out of Wichita yesterday. It was uh, 24 degrees, and it was icy, wet, and a uh, nice place to leave right at the moment. Well, the big news, of course, matter of fact, that led to uh, Aero News this morning is that you guys are hitting your stride now in regards to Skycatcher deliveries. It's been a long, slow, methodical process, but then again, you folks have said, you know, it's either right or not, and you've stuck to your guns in that area. But I guess there's 30 in uh, people's hands now? Yeah, uh, we're really pleased the way the program's going. Uh, as you know, they're built in Shenyang, China, and the airplanes come over across the Atlantic and they're delivered to Yingling Aviation. At Yingling, they're assembled and delivered to the customer from there. So the 60 that have come over in the past few months, 30 of those have been delivered to customers. So what do you see as the production schedule for the rest of 11? Well, we're looking at about 150 deliveries, and we have a pretty high level of confidence that we'll, we'll meet that. Uh, next year, we think that's going to increase quite a bit. So uh, we're, we're pretty confident that we'll have a continual ramp up. As long as the market is there, uh, we'll continue to produce good numbers. What have you learned from this process up till now? I mean, uh, above and beyond uh, all the major history, I mean, from the standpoint of actually getting airplanes here in serious numbers and putting them into people's hands, what are the early lessons telling you? One of the challenges we had early in the program was the fact that we made modifications to the aircraft as a result of some very conscientious, shall we say, test flying that we've done. And as we were ramping up production, we had to make those adjustments either on the line or have them made back at Cessna. That was a good learning curve, good learning experience, and we've gotten through that very well. And uh, as, as we ramp up, the cadence is, is very reliable, and uh, we think we got it right at this point. Well, you guys put this through a very thorough and intense program. As you and I were talking a little while ago, and you know, you had some issues with uh, early spin handling before you made the modifications. And you know, our response to folks who were complaining about that process was, well, that's why they call it test flying. But do you know of any aircraft in the LSA community that went through as extensive a test profile as the Skycatcher? Well, I'm, I'm not personally aware of anyone, but I know that as Cessna, we had to get it right. Uh, if this is going to have the Cessna name on it, it has to be a, a Cessna quality and, and has to meet all the expectations of Cessna and fulfill the tradition of Cessna. So we would not release that airplane unless, unless we thought it was uh, what it deserved to be. The beauty of the Release 9 system architecture is that you have two fully redundant integrated flight displays. Each has access to all the systems and data. Providing full redundancy and eliminating traditional reversionary modes, Release 9 allows either display to be configured as the PFD. Now your failure modes are much more manageable because you can continue to fly with the same familiar display symbology without the need to relearn composite modes you don't typically fly with. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is truly the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology. One of the things, of course, beyond the other controversies that occur in any big name program was the fact that you made a decision that the only way you're going to be able to bring this market to market affordably was, of course, to engage with China as a manufacturing partner. A lot of controversy on that because there are people who just opposed to anything that they don't know. So the big question is, okay, you've got 60 of these things, you've put 30 of them out in the field. How is the build quality? Are they doing the job? The uh, feedback we're getting from the flight schools, who uh, some of them are running at 100 hours a month, mm -hmm. some of the airplanes, is outstanding. There are no major issues that they're concerned about. They constantly give us positive feedback on the handling qualities, the classroom environment of the Skycatcher having a larger cabin, as well as the avionics, the modern technology, and what it does to prepare students for a future career or just recreational flying. Well, with what you know now and the lessons that have been hard won and hard fought under the circumstances, what does the program look like from here? I mean, what is the future of the Skycatcher in the Cessna universe? Well, I think it'll be like any other program at Cessna. If you study the 150 evolution to the 152, we're always looking at ways to improve the aircraft and make it a better training platform and recreational platform, making it more efficient, safer, and so we'll constantly look at those and you'll see improvements as we go along throughout the generations of this airplane. There's been a lot of flack in the LSA community about how poorly this uh, market segment 
presents itself to the rest of aviation. And to a certain extent, it was companies like Cessna and then Piper who gave LSA more credibility than it had had previously by entering that market. With what you know now and what you've learned, what lessons would you impart to the rest of the LSA community about mutual survival? What do you think this industry needs to do as far as LSA is concerned to make this the force it was supposed to be in the beginning? I think we have to constantly remind ourselves how important this segment is. I mean, we see it as important to Cessna because we believe that when a pilot starts to fly in a certain airplane, he'll continue that brand loyalty, and that's been our experience for 80 years. We think if everyone took that approach, they would see it in, in terms of great pride and try to build their following and their loyalty the same way and they've got to have that confidence in their product and eventually that will certainly lead to I think greater stability in the LSA market. Now another moment of freedom from Cirrus Aircraft. Freedom through safety. Perhaps the ultimate freedom is confidence, assurance and peace of mind. We design it into every personal aircraft we build. It's the security that comes with knowing you're flying the plane with a parachute. The breakthrough concept that launched the Cirrus phenomenon. There's been some recent conversations that LSA was a little bit too limiting in a couple of areas. Everybody's happy with the speed and a couple of other issues, but they feel that we need a little bit more empty weight and a couple of other little parameters here and there. And then there's the whole question of how to use them and where they can be used and so forth. Is LSA viable as the stats stand now, or would you like to see that open up a little bit? Well, the definition of LSA really defines what you can do with the airplane. When you design an airplane, you're dealing with trade-offs, and that's the world we all live in. And on top of that, you have the financial situation that you have to make a business case for it. Nobody wants to lose money on, on selling airplanes. So you put all that in the mix, and then how you determine what are your priority items as far as design goes is what bubbles to the top and makes each airplane unique. And uh, trying to do that on a certain budget, we think that at 112, 250, that the price is very reasonable for flight schools and individuals who want to get into a new high technology airplane. But you're always dealing with those trade-offs. Bob, we appreciate your time and we look forward to hearing uh, more about future Skycatcher deliveries and uh, we'll have to get back together uh, to when Skycatcher 1000 rolls off the line. Won't be long. Sounds good. Thanks, you.